Hi, my name is Pinky Gilani and you are watching Pinky TV. Thank you for watching us on Facebook. If you are here on Facebook, make sure you drop a comment and let us know where you are watching from. If you are on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to this channel for more episodes like this. Um, welcome to What Women Want Online. This is the show where you get to meet incredible people who share stories of hope, resilience and excellence. We're filming from the Social House and these conversations are brought to you by SBM Bank and Safaricom. If you have something inside of you that you want to bring to life, whether you want to bake it, speak it, write it, record it, then you are in for a real treat. Today we are talking about what it takes to live life to your absolute fullest and my guest is really the person to show you how. Caroline Tharao is the CEO of Mualimu Productions. She is an actress, a producer and the top female Kenyan comedian. She's lovingly known as Teacher Wanjiku and Mama Susana and has managed to grab critical acclaim and being all the rage on YouTube as well as taking over social media. She's the queen of comedy and her ability to make people laugh has taken her across the globe showcasing her country as well as her talent. She's a trailblazer, an award winner and has endorsed several huge brands plus she has a passion for helping the girl child. Welcome Caroline. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Where's my camera? Which one? This one? Uh, no, just face, oh, face, I face here. you. Yes. Okay. It's important to ask that in the <laughs> when I want to refer to something. Mm -hmm. mm, sorry, yes. sorry. I should have said Horo Aku Teacher Anjiku. Eh, Mwegamu no. Wow, look hey, at us. It's been oh, a minute. It's been a minute. Hero, John. It's been a minute. <laughs> so for me, I've really not prepared any questions it's because okay. I want to have this conversation with you. Yeah. And I know you're not a person of looking at questions. You just want to bounce off. We, we yes. have this vibe, and we, let's just go a little bit back into your childhood yeah. when you discovered that you have a sense of humor. So I grew up in a place called, I don't know if you, you, you know that place, but maybe you've heard of it, eh? uh, Islands. I've heard. Oh, you've heard. <laughs> Islands. I've, I've been there, I think, once or twice. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I grew up in Huruma Estate. Yeah. And back in the days, I don't remember watching any comedy, but in the house, I think I was the funny one. Okay. One who was the funny born. I used to uh, make a lot of jokes that people were laughing and I was like, people are laughing who is this oh, yeah. what's this so m my mom was also funny and uh, we have I have a series called Mama Susanna yeah so it's it's inspired by her okay because she was this uh, woman who was like so there's this word I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting the word um, she, she, she like used to tell you something she doesn't mean it and then she's so sarcastic that's okay. what I was looking for yeah. she was a very sarcastic woman but funny in a way but that time we didn't look at her like she was funny. It's like, oh my goodness, this woman. Because we were like four girls, so she had to be really strict. Okay. So when we used to look at her, we were like, this, this is not funny. But when I grew up and then redid the whole thing, how she was, then I'm like, hmm. Girl, you're oh, funny. Sh this is where I get it from. Yeah. <laughs> I got Hello. it from my mama. Yes, yeah, so I, I was always the funny one in the wow. house. Yeah, wow. just doing these jokes with food. And I was not doing it intentionally. I guess it just was flowing. So yeah. what happened when, like, when did you decide, I want to show my funny to the world? So oh, that sounds so bad. I want, I want to, to show, show my, my wit my, <laughs> to the world. My wit, my yeah. funniness. Yes, yeah. Um, so in, in primary school, I used to do uh, drama. But when I went to high school, I never, Participate. never actually participated at all. And then after high school, I was like, what do I do with my life, you know? Like, what do I do? Mm. And then I started a couple of businesses. I, I got my child when I was very young, yeah. in my teens. So, you know, it was a lot of things coming. So mm -hmm. after the businesses I did, because I'm, I'm so not good, like, in business. In business. Uh -huh. So I had a friend of mine who came and told me, by the way, she, she, she used to act. Yeah. So you know one thing or two? She so, said, yeah, I can. And then we went for auditions. And then the director, who was like so like mean and, you know, he used yeah. to say these very harsh words. And I was picked. Wow. Yeah. 
But that's it this back is in the day. This heartstrings. Was this heartstrings? This is before heartstrings. Okay. So I used to do set books. Okay. You okay. know, when you go to primary school, yeah. uh, secondary school, sorry, and then you perform to the kids, uh -huh. the set books. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah? I don't know if you, do you know set books? Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so the set books. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and, we used to, and we used to go to secondary schools and perform on the table because they didn't have a stage. A stage. So we had to create our own stage, put bed sheets. Uh, as a were, uh, yes, at the backdrop. So that's the backstage. Wow. Yeah, and then we perform to the kids just to make them understand more about the books they are reading and all that. Then after that, I was like, I need something else. Yeah. So another friend of mine again came and asked me, I think because you're very good at what you do, I think we need the public to see you more. Are you interested? I was mm -hmm. like, yeah. And that's when I joined Heartstrings mm -hmm. Kenya, which was fantastic. The directors were so harsh, mean, good at what they're doing, trying to get the best out of you. And I think that's why I'm like on top. Right. Yeah. So I did a couple of, I did like uh, how many plays? Around 30 plays. Wow. Yeah, on stage. And this is where Teacher Wanjiku was born. Yes, she was born on stage. So what happened is we did, uh, you've heard my English, yeah? What happened was, <laughs> I know, I think it's, <laughs> It's because I've been traveling a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so what happened? <laughs> what happened was um, I decided because every step of my life has been it's about challenges. So I was like, this is not mm -hmm. challenging enough. I need something. It's something else I need here. So I went to my directors and told them, you know what? I think I'm ready to do stand up because mm -hmm. in comedy there's so many genres of um, comedy. Yes, yes. But for stand up is a different ball game altogether. Mm -hmm. So they were like, hmm, so go prepare something, come perform. Yeah. And I went, I performed, they were like, uh, no. Oh. Yeah, I don't think you're ready to do this one. I mean, it's quite hard yeah. and, you know. You didn't make them laugh. I didn't. So they said no for two years. So I kept going back, I kept going back, I'm going back. And then one day I prepared this nice mm. script. I went to them. They still said no. But they gave me um, an opportunity. So before the play starts, there's always a hot spot. Okay. You know, where, where you're given and you explain something to the audience mm -hmm. about the play and whatever mm -hmm. is happening. And then I did one, they were like, wow, I think you should run the whole two weeks of the show, okay. give you the hotspot, and, yeah. they, and they gave it to me. But I used to say the same lines, trust me. Because <laughs> they didn't trust me with having a different material okay. on stage. It was like, yeah. maintain this yeah. and don't change it. So after, after the plays, they were like, I, I think we should put you on the hot seat. So hot seat is now where the real stand-up is. Okay. Yeah? So you have the audience there, and then, and then now there's you on stage. So I prepared material for like a whole 30 minutes. And I was like, I'm listening to it. I'm like, who's going to laugh to this? Yeah. Like, ah. And then I kept doing it. I kept on doing it, doing it, doing it until I got it right. When I went on stage and the, that spotlight was on me, that was it. You had, so you had arrived. I had arrived. And I did one, two, three, couple of shows. And then it was, now we have a Eureka. I think you're ready to meet now the great masses and all that. Mm -hmm. So we had a, a play called 43rd Kenyan Tribe. Mm -hmm. Now that's when Chichawanjiko was born. Yeah. 43rd Kenyan Tribe was about impunity. So the, the 43rd Tribe back then was impunity. Ah. Yeah, it's back when there was a lot of uh, political whatever uh -huh. things that were happening. So we were told, um, so this play, because we want people to watch it, because it was amazing content, yeah. you have to go with this to uh, Churchill Show. We go and advertise the play. Yeah. So we were three t-shirts. One was uh, Kikuyu, the second one was the Luya teacher, and a Somali teacher. And I'm telling you, you know, Kenyans, mm. if they, they love, they love. There's nothing else you can do. <laughs> so what do you do? Right? What do you do <laughs> when they say it's a yes? Yeah. So we went with the play and uh, it was received. It was amazing. Mm. Yeah, the feedback that we got. So people wanted to see more of, 
the Kikuyu teacher. And yeah. when I was given that, the, the character, mm -hmm. I was like, how do I even have an accent? I can't. I mean, you've wow. met me. How? Yeah, sorry, like, you don't have an accent. <laughs> like, how am I going to do this accent? <laughs> you know? And they insisted, they were like, we want this, we want this. Then they told me, let's do this. Because you really want this. And thus, we want, we want you with the accent. And then you want yourself without the accent. So I went, performed without the accent. Oh, well, I, I got mm. laughs, maybe a few giggles, like, <laughs> you know? But when I went back with the brand, Chichawanjiko, oh, it was amazing. Yeah. Everyone was like, look at it. You know, and the, and I think was that your world. your imitation of someone falling off? The yeah, chair. yeah, it's falling off. It's like they laugh like, it's like I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Yeah, and that's how the brand was born. And so, what happens yeah. when you are now preparing yourself for your your dream job? Right, this is your dream job to be a stand up comedian. Yeah, and you're told. Go in front of a live audience. Yeah. And you, were, you were about to say I was nervous and whatever. What, yeah. what is the self-talk that happens in your head when you are now standing in front of your audience and about to deliver your lines? There is a lot of tension and butterflies. And like, oh my goodness, this better work. You know, in comedy, we get to gauge our job by... The laughter. The laughter. Yes. So if nobody laughs, yeah. I'm you're sorry. A yeah. I mean, you're having, this is a very bad day in office. Yeah. Like yeah. Nobody is laughing at anything you're yeah. saying. So there's a lot of tension. You talk to yourself a lot. I have, I normally do like 10 seconds of reading the audience and coming down. So I have, there's, there's a sort of, we call it in Kikuyu, it's motaratara. Trust me, they don't know oh, okay. when they watch this. Yeah, yeah. motaratara. Yeah, like, what Did you? I say it right? Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Ah. look at you. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mutaratara. Yeah. So I get on stage. I have 10 seconds of reading the audience and going through material. And I'm like, I'm doing ABCD, like in 10 seconds. Yeah. And then I calm down. So every time I go on stage, I'm like, when I say, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, that is me coming down. Good evening. Wow. Yeah. That is me coming down. Oh. You know, just getting familiar yeah. with the audience and then I go straight to material. Okay. Now, preparation of the material takes quite a That's while. a lot, right? Yeah, because for a 10, 15 minutes show, mm -hmm. I have to do at least one month of going through the script and just take this off. Nobody's laughing. Take this off. And I have, I have like this whole team where I come up with the concept and then we go through the material. So it's a lot of work coming on stage. Now, when I'm doing one hour and a half show, Oh, that's going to take months to just put everything together. So now it brings me to the remuneration mm -hmm. of a female comedian in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Are you my rich friend, Shiko? Oh, have you met me? Yeah, <laughs> I am. Hello, it's on. Do you, it's been do you, a minute. It's been a minute. <laughs> your uh, house in Runda with 10 bedrooms. There are 10 bedrooms. <laughs> and your yeah. shopper. And my shopper and my jet and, and my kaisa. Mm -hmm. Do female comedians make money in Kenya? Yes and no. Okay. Yes, because I do make money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the only thing. I know thing. you have a job. Yes, I, I have a job. Hello. Like. I make people laugh. Hey? <laughs> <laughs> so yes, they do make money. Not all of them. Of course, when you have a name, a brand name that you've built uh, for, I don't know, Mm -hmm. maybe a decade or whatever. Wow, that long? Yeah, you, you, you get to make money. And no, because when it comes to branding, it's very important how you package yourself. Mm -hmm. There's also that bit of consistency. So in order for you to make money, you need like a 360 as a brand. Yes. You need trust from the people and from the clients yeah, to be able to make whatever you think your worth. Mm -hmm. So it's it, making money, uh, yeah, it's a lot when you want to do that. Yeah. How do you build your brand? My brand. So for me, what has worked over the years? So consistency, consistency sorry, mm -hmm. knowing your worth, uh, respecting your brand, and listening. 
listening I mean by just get to go and look for people who are successful in the industry, mm -hmm. especially the, the comedy industry. Talk to them. Let them advise you and see how you can move forward. You don't have to take every suggestion you're given. You just pick what you think is important to you. Yeah. So I have a lot of things that I would say about making a brand, which we we'll talk about this year when we're doing the Comedy Queens. And that's just about what I do, but okay. it's a whole book. I'm, I'm going to write a book one day. Yeah, I think you need to write a I book. I need to. Right? I need to. What like would you call it? Brain, I'm calling it Tisha Wajiko's Do's and Don'ts okay. in Comedy. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> but, but I think about a good name that is yeah. catchy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would buy that book. You buy it? No, you'd give it to me for free because... We don't do free stuff. Are you going to expose me? <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's a lot of exposure in the industry, the name exposure. So. Yeah, actually, let's, let's talk about yeah. friendships mm -hmm. in this industry mm -hmm. and uh, how do you maintain friendships um, and do your friends help you grow? In comedy, yes, women, we, we do support each other, but also we support each other in how well do we know each other okay and it's a very big challenge because sometimes women feel if you support me then you're helping me grow mm -hmm. and then you forget when you help me or I help you we are growing the industry together yeah. and you have your name I have my name so why don't we combine this mm -hmm. and make this industry bigger this bigger and bigger so that's what one of the challenges that we have and also another reason as to why I, I, I came up with the concept Comedy Queens. To just bring us together every year, we perform on stage, we talk about what we are going through, and then we just be funny. Yeah. Because that's the thing. So you're uplifting women through Comedy Queens. Yes. And you're actually exposing this industry in, yes. in the sense like you're paving the way for female comedians. And not only that, you're also teaching them a thing or two because I understand you have a boot camp Yes, <laughs> the, uh, the first one ever mm -hmm. to be had anywhere. So I'm the one who has started this, okay. the boot camp. And the reason why we thought about the boot camp is every single challenge I've gone through in the industry, we'll see it in the boot camp. Every single thing that I was not taught about finances, about my mental uh, health, state, yeah. about my state, about um, image, about branding. So we're going to show all that. And these ladies, what I want them to go with at home after this whole show is experience. What did I experience? Will this help me mm. moving forward in my uh, comedy career? So it's, it's going to be quite a... You've, you've a said it a few times, know your worth, know your worth, working out my worth. Mm. Um, how, how does a person work out what they are worth? What they are worth? Yeah. Again, it comes back to branding. Okay. How you've branded yourself. Yeah. There, I choose. In order for you to know what your worth is, I don't expect to see you advertising everything and anything. Mm. No, I advertise this water only. Mm -hmm. And this water can afford me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's it? And that's it. Just know what you're advertising. Mm -hmm. Let people see what you advertise. Because you see now, if you don't know your worth, then the word exposure will have a very difficult time with it in this industry. Yes. Yeah? You'll be like, oh, these guys are using me, oh, blah, 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 blah. And that's because you don't know your worth. So worth is a very vast uh, word. And you, know, you just need to understand yourself and your brand. That's what I'm saying again, it goes back mm. to branding and how you've branded yourself. Just know, be professional when you, when you are teed. And we've had a very difficult, uh, what do we call this, um, time in the industry, mm. knowing about branding and self-worth and what is your worth. Because you're all over. Yeah. When, when anybody who meets me, and I introduce myself and I'm like, hey, my name is Tisha Wajiko. Mm. It's the mood changes. It. Yeah. They know, ah, this is the comedian. Mm. Why? Branding. Your what? How your name looks. When you see me, and there was this debate about how female comedians are 
like Chichawanjiko is the most expensive or uh, paid comedian. She's so expensive. She's ridiculous in her pricing. Mm -hmm. Hey, I've put my name out there. I've done my branding. So if I'm expensive to you, then you, maybe you're talking to the wrong person mm -hmm. and you maybe should look for someone else because, <laughs> because clearly. Because clearly, I clearly, completely. Yeah. yeah. So it's a lot of, it's, it's vast. Yes. Yeah. yeah um, I hope I've answered your question though. No, you know, I'm just like, blah, blah, blah. blah. Yes. I talk a lot too, so. It's good. This is why yeah. you're my friend. Because yeah. I don't talk so much. BFFs. You're BFFs, yes. guys. Yes. Over here, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, we, we've, we've had all these conversations, I think, even on a personal level, where yeah. we've talked about the same sort of content. Um, but another thing that we feel or that I see that you're doing, and maybe without enough acknowledgement, is this whole thing of empowering other women. Because people just look at it, oh, like she's a female comedian. But you actually are empowering other women. Yes. And do you say it's our duty uh, when we hit a certain success level, yeah. that you should be able to empower others. Forget only women, yeah. you know, men and, and women. With men and women. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it's when you get to a certain level. Mm -hmm. I think empowering needs to start very early in the stages. Because even when I, was in, when I, when I started my career, I used to do things with other women also, and I was not like this uh, big, uh, superstar brand name yeah no so it has to start from the beginning when you feel you need to empower somebody you don't need money you've mm. seen people empowering others yeah at yeah. a very low level they, they don't even have they don't even know where to start but they yeah. just empower somebody but of course also the empowering when you're doing well yeah it makes e things easier for you yes. when you want to empower other women yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So I know you're doing this really interesting project because, you know, everything has been stopped in regards to events. But Comedy Queens is your thing. You've been doing it for the last three years. This one is a new version of Comedy Queens. Just expound a little. We're so curious. Yes. So uh, I've been doing Comedy Queens. This is the third year. Oh, We're this is the third it. year. Yes. Okay. We were supposed to do it uh, at KICC this year. Then uh, Corona yes. Yeah. happened mm. so we had to go back to the drawing book and just think about how we are going to do the show we didn't want to cancel it so like how do we do it so we sent out um, a word out there we are looking for new fresh comedy queens if you think you're funny and uh, sending your clips and we've had we've been doing the audition process they, they can check it out on youtube and uh, we're doing the process it's amazing we found eight girls yeah. who are going to move in. We are doing boot camp. Okay. Yes, so we are going to move in uh, into a hotel and we're going to stay there for a couple of weeks. Wow. We record everything, we get to see. We are giving out 100,000. What? To the funny one. Is it too late to apply? Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, because oh. we are just finishing up. So we're giving out 100,000. <laughs> okay. Kenya shillings to the, the one. Funniest. The funniest. And you can vote, you can vote online okay. for this, for your favorite. And what we are basically looking for is, are you funny? Mm. Are you funny? Are you we just funny? want funny. Yeah? See, in the comedy world, we don't have male and female. Mm -hmm. Now, that stage, whether you're male or female, you have to be funny. So yeah. that's what we are looking for. I'm super excited. So this is so going to be watchable on your YouTube channel? All my channels uh, follow me. They know me yeah, as uh, Tisha Wajiko Priest, Tisha Wajiko on Twitter, uh, Wajiko the Tisha on Facebook and on Instagram. Tisha Wajiko. I'm just like all over. You really are. So we'll go uh, uh, live with this yeah. for the premiere uh, of the okay. show. Ah, wow. Yes. And, and we are wrapping everything up, the gala night, where we'll give out the money and whatever in October. So I'm super excited. That would be amazing. Um, what, what sort of, what are the three things you can say that when you are in uh, the limelight, mm -hmm. three things that you have to keep to maintain professionalism? Time. Um, what else? There's time. There is um, consistency, and also there's a third one I'm, I'm forgetting. But let me just talk about time first, yeah. and then uh, I'll get to the other things. Time for me is very important. I'm running a production now called Mualim Productions, mm -hmm. and time for me is everything. We've fired people who are late. Wow. Yeah. 
Mm. Not in a... No, sorry is nothing. Yeah. Okay. Because I believe, for example, me as a shawajiko, I don't waste your time. Yeah. Why are you wasting mine? Mm -hmm. And if you know you're supposed to be somewhere at 10 o'clock, be there. Yeah. Yeah, be there. And if you're not going to make it, let me know. Mm -hmm. But because as this industry, especially the comedians, yes. we have that weakness. Like time is nothing. We're just like, yes, whatever. And, and they always believe that if you're a celebrity, when you come an hour yeah. late, late, that makes you bigger, bigger, important. Oh, wow. She's a, no, I look at you and I'm like, you're so unprofessional. Mm. Why would you come an hour late? So time for me is very important. I've been fired before. For being late. For being late. A lot of times. I have walked out of somebody very important who kept me for an hour and a half. Mm. So time is very, very important. And that sort of uh, makes you who you are. Out there, the brand, Tishawajiko, is known for keeping time. Mm. For for being consistent mm -hmm. at what she says, for always making the other person feel comfortable, you know? So it's a lot. I've forgotten about the other one. It's okay, it's the two, two important yeah. points. Is there, would you say there's a fine line between being a private celebrity, because you know there are some people who are private celebrities, although you're a celebrity, but you just don't walk into a room and assume everyone knows you? Yes. Is there a fine line between being a private celebrity and being arrogant? Yes, or, there is. you know, mistaken as arrogant. Yeah, so you see, like, for me, let me give you an example with me. I never, as much as I am known, like, Pink's, I am so famous, it's unbelievable. Okay, did I say that? Girl. Oh, my God, I should, I should not say I that. Know. Oh, my God. I should, that's the <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, people know me. And I never assume everybody knows me. Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I always introduce myself. Always. Hi, my name is Tisha Wajiko. Oh, I see you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just like, and they always tell me, oh, you don't even need to introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't know you? Yeah. And I'm like, it's only courteous yeah. to just introduce yourself, make people know. They, they, you don't even know who you're introducing yourself to. Right. Yeah? And that says a lot about you. Arrogance and, and, it's not in the same sentence. Mm -hmm. Don't be arrogant. You are there because of your fans. Yes. You're there because of how people have appreciated you, have appreciated you over the years. So don't be arrogant. Don't do this celebrity thing or whatever people do. Just come in and then you have an attitude. Mm. Celebrities also give each other attitude. I don't know yeah. if you know that. Yeah? You know yourself, eh? <laughs> I won't mention anyone here. Of course I know. <laughs> They're like, yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But being nice to people, that is also something else that, to the public and everybody else, that is one of the best things that has happened to me. Just being nice, it has paid. Yeah. Being nice. And if you don't want a photo, by the way, Pinks, if you don't want to take a photo yeah. with me, or if you ask me for a photo and I say no, mm. it's all right. It's all right. Mm. Don't. Stress yourself. Yeah. yeah. It's just a photo. Mm. Yeah. I, I, you know, this conversation can go on and on. And on. And, and on. on. Because me on. and you, we talk a lot. So. Yeah. I just want to touch on your, your parenting skills because I've seen you with your kids. Yes. Your girls are like your best friends. They yeah. make you laugh, I think. Yes, they do. Yeah. And you are more than a mother. You're just, you're this person who's inspired by your children. Am yes. I right in saying that? Yes. Yes, why? yes, you are. Why, why, why? Where does that come from? <sighs> I don't know. Oh, my goodness. I think my kids just understood me, especially yeah. for the eldest, yeah. Nicole. Nicole grew up with this. Okay. Grew up. Watching you watching become Watching me on celebrity. stage. Yeah. And she looks at me, she's like, my goodness, I can't believe... It's your mom, look yeah. at you, so famous. <laughs> at school, she's like, oh my goodness. Hello, like, mom. No, it's about me, yeah. not you. She's oh, yeah. like, and then I'm like, I can't help it. <laughs> it's me. Yeah, so my kids have been a very, very big support 
in my career and I look up to them. They make me go out there and keep on doing it. Now I'm trying to involve a little bit of Zuri and uh, Nicole in my acts. I saw. And, and they give me ideas too. They're mm. like, Psh. Nicole is always like, Psh. that's not even funny. That's lame. Yeah, wow. mom, that is a what? Why are you even dressed like that? It's like, ugh. I'm like, this is where the money is coming from. So my yeah. kids really inspire me a yeah. lot. I get that from them. So do you think as moms we should, we should um, be able to laugh with our children more than, you know, taking life so seriously? Because we do want to teach them values, we want to teach them principles, but of, of course we should have the flip side where we're laughing a lot with them. Yeah, yeah, very important to yeah. make your kids feel comfortable. Let me tell you, if you don't make your kids feel comfortable around you, then I don't know how you're going to communicate with them. Mm. You know, this is not like back in the days when you see your parents, you're like freezing. Yeah. You're like, oh my God. Oh, yeah. And you're so happy when, when they leave in the morning, you're like, oh my God. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> I yeah? Breathe, yeah. Your kids should, be, should, should help you or should motivate you to come back home. Let your kids speak for you, your mm. kids. You know, they're like, hey, mom is here, we miss him. Yeah. So that relationship is very important. I laugh a lot with my kids in the house, but I'm also very strict. Mm. That is also something else, yes, yeah. you know. I, I don't want to say we have to be best friends, mm -hmm. me and my kids, but there's just a level, a certain level we can go yeah. and another one. So they need to know I'm a mom yeah. and I'm their friend. So when it's business, yeah. oh, it's business. Mm -hmm. When it is cool, it's cool. When it is laughter, we're going out, having a good time, it's that. Yeah. Yeah, so... Is laughter the best medicine? It's absolutely the only medicine. Yeah. Can it cure corona? It will cure corona. <laughs> and it has, by the way. Some pe people are stressed out here. Yeah. They, they are so stressed. So when you go online and you see, and you get to watch Hero or John, mm. it's been a minute, mm. you forget about what you're going through for like a minute. Yeah. It's, yeah? it's been a minute. Yeah. A minute. When you see Mama Susanna, you're like, yeah. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. So it's the best medicine. It keeps me going. Yeah. I normally watch myself after. And I'm like, oh man, I'm funny. <laughs> Shh. What do I do? <laughs> because you have to love yourself, Pinky. You, you have do. to. Yeah. You have to appreciate yourself. It comes from you first, yeah. then, then that the energy rest of the world. Spreads, yeah. Yeah. Because so, you, you don't have. You, I, I always part. If I have a good show, I go backstage and I'm like, that was awesome. Yeah. And then when I don't do a good job, I'm like, oh man, yeah. tomorrow is another day of my awesomeness. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to keep on going, keep on going. Yeah. Cheeks, thank you so much. Wow. We are done. No, wait. Oh, oh my oh. gosh. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, like, like okay. I said, we could. <laughs> we could. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. I started watching you a while ago. Mm -hmm. I just think you're so hilarious and so thank you, relatable. Thank you. Um, Auntie Waharia is... is <laughs> <laughs> it's been a minute. <laughs> when you're talking to Wajon, I'm just like, oh my gosh. And of course, then I did the imitation of that skit. Yes. Like I lip synced. Everyone's like, ah, you need TikTok. But I, I didn't use TikTok. I just listened to you and I literally lip synced in a, in a go. And it was just so much fun to see the reaction of people when I did that. That was amazing. And I have to thank you because I, I have to do this. I've told you before, but that is the best thing that happened with that brand. Wow. Because when you did it, we, I got more than what I expected from the brand. And how you say the words in Kikuyu, amazing. I couldn't even believe it's you. I mean, it's you. I know, right? Yeah? It's Pinky Galani who's doing that. And your video actually now has like 3,000 shares, just to tell you. Oh, wow. Really? Just to throw it out 3, there. 3,000 shares? 3,000 shares, oh, the one wow. you did. So wow. it was fantastic. And you introduced me to uh, your community. Oh, hello, our last bones. You know you're uh -huh. our last bones, yeah, eh? 44th. 44th tribe. <laughs> <laughs> so you introduced me to the 44th tribe. Do you know they love you? They love you. The Asian it's community amazing. love you. And they, I mean, also the response that I got when I did this clip from the Asian community, people were just like, whoa, whoa that whoa. is in, so cool. And of course, then they found out more about you. But then also from like Kikuyu moms in school, 
they were like, hey, Wajon. Hey, Wajon, hello. <laughs> I was like feeling bad because I was stealing your thunder. No, People were calling no. Me you are growing me more. Yeah, and it was more amazing. And, and thank you so much, Pinky, for doing that. No, thank you. You're, I mean, you are just awesome. And I got also to work for Asians. Yeah. <laughs> which is amazing. <laughs> like, they were like, hello, can you do the hello? <laughs> can you please, can you come? Yeah. Can you, uh, I'm so glad. But that's what it's about, right? Yeah. Lifting each other up. Lift each other up. Yeah. Thank you so much, Pinky, for calling me here. I really appreciate it. Thank oh, you. So Normally, chicks. Yeah. You know, Girl. I don't know. Anytime. People are like, yeah. Whatever. What? No. No. Yeah, you're, you're amazing. And I'm so glad you sat down with us to, to tell us so much more about your brand. Asante sana. Nashukuru. Me pia. Nashukuru sana. Asante. Nashukuru. Asante. So Sheik tells me that I need to improve on my Kiswahili. You're terrible in Kiswahili, Pinky. No. You're terrible. I'm good. Like, can you try something? No. Oh. <laughs> don't, don't spoil my reputation on what women want. <laughs> Another day, another time. Another day, another time. <laughs> Thank you. Um, if you're not a fan of uh, big cues or of paperwork, then make sure you enjoy a world of ease on the all-new Postpay. Sign up in four easy steps and enjoy more value on calls, data, and SMSs. Head to your Safaricom app and click the Postpay, Postpay plans. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, SBM is always thinking of you, their client. Through workplace banking, SBM has made unsecured accessible loans of available for its clients. Teacher Anjiku and I would love to hear from you. Shiko and I, Shiks and I, Shiks. Please, but of course, please, please. Go to yeah. the comment section, to say, uh, give us your feedback. Yeah. And also tell us, um, oh, and don't forget to subscribe, by the way. Yes, thank you. Yeah, ah, do that. Now she said it, now yeah. it's gonna happen. Subscribe, guys, subscribe. <laughs> Good content, amazing content. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much, Shiko. Thank, thank you. you for your, just, you know, your laughter, your energy, you're just such a beautiful person oh, in every you. way. Thank you. And I'm so you. glad to call you my friend. Asante. Uh -huh. Nashkuru. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On this show, we have conversations that aim to inspire, and we hope that it causes you to take a deep dive within yourself. Find out who you are. Real power is always internal. Real power is self love. Real power is from your core and real power comes from authenticity. There is nothing like showing up as your authentic self. Find that person and show up as that person every day. The world will be grateful that you did. Thank you for, thank you for watching. We'll see you again real soon. Bye.